We're going to read this scripture in John chapter 20, starting in verse 11. This is the moment that Jesus, the very first moment that Jesus has coming out of the tomb where it's an appearance to someone. It's an exchange with one of his followers. It's a beautiful exchange. The reason why we're doing this and the reason why Celia gave portion of that second song there with Spanish lyrics sung so beautifully and the reason why we're doing this interpretation now. We're not a bilingual church, but we are a church that recognizes the absolutely wonderful beauty of diversity. We believe that revival looks like people of all races and ethnicities coming together to worship Jesus. Why? Because in Revelation, amen, Revelation, there is three or four examples of just this beautiful demonstration of people of all backgrounds coming to worship Jesus. And actually all over the world right now as we speak, people of all kinds of backgrounds are worshiping Jesus. So that's why we're giving this nod to another language um, that's so beautiful that we are now going to read here in John chapter 20. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying. She wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one at the head and the other at the foot. Pero María se quedó afuera, llorando junto al sepulcro. Mientras lloraba, se inclinó para mirar dentro del sepulcro y vio a dos ángeles vestidos de blanco, sentados donde había estado el cuerpo de Jesús, uno a la cabecera y el otro a los pies. They asked her, Woman, why are you crying? ¿Por qué lloras, mujer? Le preguntaron los ángeles. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't know where they have put him. At this, she turned around, and she saw Jesus standing there, but she did not realize that it was Jesus. Es que se habían llevado a mi Señor, y no sé dónde lo han puesto. Le respondió... Apenas dijo esto, volvió la mirada y allí vio a Jesús de pie, aunque no sabía que era él. He asked her, Woman, why are you crying? Who is it you are looking for? Thinking he was the gardener, she said, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have put him, and I will get him. Jesús le dijo, ¿Por qué lloras, mujer? ¿A quién buscas? Ella Pensando que se trataba del que cuidaba el huerto, le dijo, Señor, si usted lo ha llevado, dígame dónde lo ha puesto, y yo iré por él. Jesus said to her, Mary. María, le dijo Jesús. She turned toward him and cried out in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Ella se volvió y exclamó, Rabboni, que en arabeo significa maestro. Jesus said, do not hold on to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go instead to my brothers and tell them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Suéltame, porque todavía no he vuelto al Padre. Ve más bien a mis hermanos y, dis, y diles, vuelvo a mi Padre, que es Padre de ustedes, a mi Dios, que es Dios de ustedes. Mary Magdalene went to the disciples with the news, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. María Magdalena fue a darles la noticia a los discípulos, He visto al Señor, exclamaba, y les contaba lo que él había dicho. Thank you. Amen. Thank you to Gindry. Everybody clap for Gindry. Mm -hmm. Thank you. My heart is drawn to this passage of Scripture. In fact, I've preached on it before. And the reason why is I see so much humanity in this text. The devil wants to dehumanize people. But Jesus, the Bible actually says that he clothed himself with humility. He clothed himself with humanity. And so he identifies with our weaknesses and he identifies with what makes us feel the way that we feel. And in this scripture, we're seeing so much emotion from Mary. 
Mary feels confused. She feels heartbroken. She has moments of weeping. She is full of fear. And she's not sure what it is that's going on. And it's in this moment that captivates my heart. The Easter message, the first time, the first time that Jesus meets with somebody. The simple point at which the story pivots is the sound of her Savior speaking her name. The very inflection of his voice, the very projection of what he said, it was so familiar. And Mary, in her humanity, in her weeping, in the moment of saying, I'm just not sure what's going on, it's this moment that she turns around. Easter is a turnaround. Easter is the moment that history turns around. Easter is the moment that mankind turns around from the direction it was going into the direction that it is supposed to be. There are two areas that the followers of Jesus really struggled to understand. And I can relate to following Jesus and still having moments where I struggle to understand all that God is doing. Why did it happen this way? Why did it work out this way? I had my expectations on this, but now this is happening. And the disciples themselves were stuck in two particular areas. They did not understand. First, they didn't understand what Jesus, even what his mission was. They heard him preach. They heard the, the Mount of uh, the Sermon on the Mount, the Beatitudes, they saw what he taught, but still they struggled to understand why did he come to earth? Is it so that we take up our weapons and overturn and become victors over the people that are above us? No. Jesus said to Peter, in the garden of Gethsemane, take your sword and put it down. Was it so that they would achieve status that they'd been yearning for, having been oppressed for so long? Was that the reason why Jesus came? No. They weren't going to see that type of kingdom change on them. So what was it? Was it more rules? Was it more regulations? What something special would be revealed because their point of reference was Moses. Moses to them was a type of Messiah. And when they look back, Moses was the one who led the people out of slavery. He was their political leader. He was their religious leader. And at one point, God calls him up the mountain because he wants to speak to him. And Moses goes up the mountain for 40 days. And the rest of the people think like they thought Jesus was, they think that Moses is dead. So in his absence, they create an idol, and they build this idol. They replace the God who created them with the God that they created. And that's often the essence of sin, is when we build our own lives apart from God. We say, God, you might have a plan for my life, but I want to do it my way. And so they had an understanding that Moses was gone. They rejected him. And so when Moses comes back down the mountain, he sees what they're doing. And God actually uses them, uses Moses as an instrument of judgment and condemnation. The people are caught in their sin. They're stuck in their sin. And there's no hope for change. So that's why the disciples who were following Jesus are out by the, after Jesus died, they're wondering, what is it all about? But here's the thing, Jesus did not come out of the tomb with an extra set of rules. He didn't come out of the tomb with new tablets written in stone. The point of the resurrection, and this is important, the whole uh, demonstration of the resurrection was not more religion, it was a relationship with God. The veil that was in the temple that could not be torn was torn in two. 
And now suddenly, what that meant was people could have this relationship with God. Instead of commandments written on stone, Jesus wrote his message, his letter of love, on the nail prints in his hands, on the nail prints in his feet. And he said, you are not getting an extra set of commandments. I am the word. I am the commandment that you need. Love me. Love others. And this is the way that you should live. This beautiful, incredible new relationship. You might already know Jesus, but if you're not walking in this active, realized, present day, real relationship with Jesus, then you miss the point of the resurrection. Because the resurrection was the demonstration that God wants a relationship with us. You know what it means? It means that he's calling your name. It means it's not a message anymore with stone tablets, new rules, new regulations. This is Jesus speaking to our hearts, and he's calling us by name. And it's the reason why Mary, who's all bound up in her confusion and her fears and her anxieties, turns quickly because she knows this one is her Savior. He is your Savior He whispers your name. If you want to celebrate Easter the right way today, it is through a personal relationship with Jesus. You know, the second thing that the disciples struggled with so much, just could not understand, was this idea that Jesus kept talking about the fact that he had to die. What do you mean, Jesus, that you have to die? How does that have to do with anything that you're here for. And they couldn't understand. Death was so final. It was so absolute. It was impossible. Even though they saw Jesus raise Lazarus from the dead, even though they witnessed that with their own eyes, and even though Jesus had testified that he must die, they could not comprehend that when he died on the cross, he was going to rise again. They weren't there waiting at the tomb saying any minute. They were confused, heartbroken. You know, the best way I can attempt to describe it is if any of you have had a traumatic experience in your life, you can know what it's like to live with that trauma in you. Subconsciously, it affects you. It can trigger, certain things can trigger your anxieties, bring you to tears out of nowhere, memories that haunt The trauma can be so deep that even those who study trauma say it can be passed on from generation to generation. It's in the same way that death has traumatized all of humankind. In the Garden of Eden, when mankind sinned, when Adam and Eve sinned, the Bible says it introduced death into the world. That was a seismic shift. It went straight into our physical DNA. It loaded down humanity with sometimes unspoken fears and anxieties and even depressions. The sin that produced relationship heartache and all kinds of problems in our society stemmed from the trauma of that moment in the Garden of Eden, affecting us to this very generation. But that is why Easter is such a glorious celebration. Because Jesus defeated death. The Bible says that even Paul in the New Testament, he had a way of saying it. He said, death, where is your victory? Death, where is your sting? And because Jesus defeated death, The same anxieties and depressions and fears and, I mean, this past several months, so many of us have been surrounded by moments where either we lost a loved one or we know and read about it. We see the effects of it. But even in that, Paul is saying the death that weighs people down without Jesus, when you know Jesus, upspringing into your heart is something supernatural. It is the living hope of the resurrection. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. It is the living 
hope of the resurrection. It is the fact that he truly died for us. And he accomplished everything that he wanted to on that cross to forgive us of our sins, to wash away our sins. We see it demonstrated in the resurrection. If the musicians can come forward. Really, Easter is our turnaround moment. It's the moment that we turn to the voice of our Savior. It's the moment that if in order for the resurrection to have meaning, because do you, do you know that Paul said anything in this text, in the scriptures, he says none of it. Not one, not one word of it actually matters unless there was a resurrection. He says not, not one bit of it. He says, I'm, I, I wouldn't write the New Testament. I wouldn't spend another second on this if the resurrection wasn't true. But when you put your faith in Jesus, and can I remind, can I remind you that the devil is a liar. The devil acts like he won. The devil still boasts that he's in control. The devil still likes to inflict pain and suffering. But you know what? He's not the winner. Jesus is the winner. Jesus is the one who defeated death. Jesus is the one who defeated the devil overthrew him, put him to shame, said you cannot have my children because if you put your faith in Jesus Christ you belong to him and nothing and no lie can break away that relationship that comes with him so the resurrection it's the proof it's the biggest proof that everything that Jesus did on the cross was fully accomplished that means your sin come on church this means your sin and my sin it's not just covered it's removed he takes it away he breaks away the bonds of guilt and shame and Moses said no you're condemned because of your sin but Jesus stepped out of that tomb with brimming with his love and his li life he said Mary it's me and it was the proof the very proof that no longer we have to live in bondage can we stand up to our feet it is the very proof that we no longer have to live in condemnation it's the proof that though there is a wrath to come though that God will bring judgment to the world that those who belong to Jesus, who say, I put my faith, my real faith, my personal faith in Jesus, in what he did on the cross, and I identify with his resurrection, not just because it's a tradition, but because he's called my name. And the sins, okay, the sins, the trauma, the gap, the gap between us and God and where that gap gets filled in with pain anybody ever be in pain maybe you're here today you've got deep down insecurity and pain and maybe you've been in situations that you think is just final it's too big it's over that's done it's not over it's not done Jesus is alive he loves you He's calling you by name. We have a living hope. And one day when this earth passes, let, let, me, let me make sure this is clear. Because if you really want to celebrate Easter, this is what's got to be clear in your spirit. I now have a living hope. The stuff that was in me, that was of my sinful nature, because of the power of the resurrection, 
because of his death on the cross, something springs up in my soul that gives me a hope that this world cannot give me. And it gives me a peace that my tormented mind will never find in this world. I find supernatural. This is what identifies a Christian as a Christian. I've got peace that overflows on the front of my mind and back of my mind and on my heart. I know that one day I'm going to be reunited with my Savior. And He has a name for me that He's going to speak in eternity. And this is why He died. And this is why He demonstrated with the resurrection. And it's because He wants a relationship with you. With you. Your name. Turn around this Easter and face your Savior. We pray together. If you'd like to, you can bow your heads. Lord, we sometimes struggle to grasp this incredible personal love that you have for us. Pray that we would all turn around. Those watching online and those in this sanctuary now would have their own Easter moment. Pausing just right now letting them, even in their imagination, placing themselves outside that tomb in your own confusion, in your own fears, in your own lostness, and finally hearing the name of your Savior calling you. Pray, Lord, that people would respond to the work of the Holy Spirit drawing us to you. Thank you, God, that we could be new creation in you because you came to redeem us. Thank you, Jesus, that the resurrection matters. And it matters that you died on the cross because you did so for us. Wash us of our sin. Thank you, Jesus, for loving us. Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. We worship you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Let's celebrate this Easter, this this last worship song together. God. 